My name is Stephen Hicks. Most people just call me Steve, kind of a way it goes. I was I was born and raised in Kansas City, went to school here, grade school, high school, and uh, attended college after I got out of the service. I remember, I think my first recollections of music at all were when somebody would show up at the house with like an accordion or a piano, something like that. But my mother would run off to the closet in the back room and grab this stack of sheet music and go sit down at the piano or grab the accordion and entertain herself for a couple of hours. And I think I think we could have kids could have burned down the house at that point. It wouldn't have mattered uh, as long as she was doing it. So the interest in music was was at that point probably started. If there was ever a musical on television, it didn't matter what else was on. That's what we were watching. You know, uh, there were there were times back probably through the 70s and the 80s and probably into even in the 90s when you could actually work four or five nights a week and, and consistently make a decent living playing. Um, but those times kind of dried up and then, of course, disco kind of killed some of that. But DJs that hurt some of that business and then some of the thing legal things that have gone down behind all that have closed a lot of those joints and the economics just aren't there anymore to be able to afford uh, five night a week entertainment for clubs and a lot of people don't go out so from that standpoint I would say no it, it the business is not in as healthy a state as it once was to go do a gig at, at, at Winslow's Barbecue one Sunday in July. And I went over to pick up the singer, Danielle Schneblin, who was a singer in the band. And I started having a heart attack in her driveway in my car. Well, ultimately, I ended up driving myself to the emergency room, and I did have a 100% blockage of an, of an artery in the heart. And when I got in there and they got all done with me and I'm in the recovery room, the first thing I wanted to know was if they found a bass player to cover the gig. Like I said, one of the things I tried to tell guys for a long time is I consider myself a working man's bass player. I, I work at, at doing what I do and doing it the best I can. I'm not trying to be the next Jocko. I'm not trying to be the next, you know, Stanley Clark or anybody else like that. I'm, I'm Steve. You know, I'll emulate and I can listen to and I appreciate really good bass players. I've met a lot of bass players over the years, uh, famous and not so famous. And some of them can just play circles around me. That never bothered me. My son, I, 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 like, to, I like to say I inherited him when he was about 15. And uh, when he came home and this guy was in the house, his mother looked at him and said, this is a Pirelli unit? just like me. Whatever he says goes just like I said it. And he looked at me and the first three things he said were, where's my drum set? I need money for a date. When do I get a car? And I was like, wow. Well, I'll see about the drum set. You'll have to get a job, work on the money and get the car. And I did. I went out and I got, I got him a drum set. And I said, now here's your drum set. Now, but this isn't going to be as easy as you think. You are going to take lessons. You are going to learn. And uh, he did, and he learned, and, and he's had some really good teachers over the years. And it wasn't really until probably the last five or six years when I've actually drug him out and go, no, it's you're, they're through being in the basement, but you need to come out and play. And a couple of friends of mine encouraged me to bring him out to a jam session. And they were like, where have you been hiding this guy? You know? I think it's, if, if, you're, if it truly is in you, it's a soul thing. I don't know any other way to put it. it you've got to play. It, it's an expression. It's, it's soul. It's expression. It's art. It's craft. You're creating. Um, 
you're speaking. I mean, you know, you speak through your instrument probably as much as you do anything else uh, so that when it does come down to, you know, how you play it or how you have to go play. I mean, if I don't play for three or four weeks, my wife tells me, get your bass and get out of the house. Speaker, I'm going to keep playing until I fall over and they're throwing dirt in my face at this point, truthfully. Uh, I, I'm going to continue to play as much as I can, as long as I'm physically able. Um, you know, I've gotten to a point now I can't stand up on a stage and jump around like a 20-year-old for four hours or five hours a night. I've got to sit down <laughs> and play. Uh, the back wants to give out. The knees don't want to work. You know, uh, wake up in the morning with stiff hands from doing it. But I'm not going to quit. I can't. It's just too inbred in me right now. I just cannot do it. I'm too inbred. I'm too inbred. I'm too inbred. It's just, it's, got, it's gotten into my blood and into my heart and into my soul so hard. I'm I inbred. cannot give it up.